What up, guys? Welcome to Downtown Ray Mel, and you're listening to the Entertainment Report on iHeartRadio, live from Dubai for Thursday, January 31st, 2019, delivering some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, facebook.com slash the Entertainment Report with Ray Mello, that's R-E-Y-M-E-L-O, on Twitter at The Enter Report, or on Instagram at The Entertainment Report. You can listen to the show anytime you want on iHeartRadio. This go to iHeart.com or your iHeart phone app, search for the Entertainment Report, and it'll take you to the page. Zack Snyder has announced on Netflix that uh, that he is going to helm its zombie thriller Army of the Dead. Uh, the streaming service said Tuesday, a group of mercenaries take the ultimate gamble, venturing into a quarantine zone following a zombie outbreak to pull off the greatest heist ever attempted. Our report said Jobby Harrell penned the screenplay for the project, which will be set in Las Vegas, filming and slated to begin this summer. Snyder so told the entertainment industry trade newspapers, there are no handcuffs on me at all with this one. I thought this was a good uh, platelet cleanser to really dig in with both hands and make something fun and epic and crazy and bonkers in the best possible way. No casting has been announced yet. Snyder's credits also include Dawn of the Dead, 300, Sucker Punch, and Watchmen. The most recent film he directed was 2017's Justice League. He left the production shortly before it was finished, however, to deal with the suicide of his 20-year-old daughter, Autumn. Josh Whedon completed the film in his absence. Filmmaker Peter Jackson is set to helm a new Beatles documentary using unseen footage of the legendary band recording their album Let It Be. The new documentary will pull from the 55 hours of footage that was shot of the Beatles working together in the studio for the original 1970 Let It Be featured film by director Michael Lindsay Hogg that was released in conjunction with the album. Jackson is making the new film with the full cooperation of Paul McCartney, Ringo Starr, Yoko Ono in place of the late John Lennon, and Olivia Harrison in place of the late uh, George Harrison. Jackson said in a statement, the 55 hours of never before seen footage and 140 hours of audio made available to us ensures this movie will be the ultimate fly on the wall experience that Beatles fans have long dreamed about. It's like a time machine transports us back to 1969 and we get to sit in the studio watch these four friends make great music together. The original film famous for featuring tensions within the Beatles has been out of circulation and was only released on VHS and Laserdisc. Bill's company Apple has announced that it will release a restored version of the original film following the release of Jackson's project. Jackson said about the original Let It Be feature, I was relieved to discover the, reali- the reality is very different from the myth. After reviewing all that footage and audio that Michael Lindsay Hogg shot 18 months before they broke up, it's simply an amazing historical treasure trove. Sure, there are moments of drama, but none of the discord this project has been long associated with. Jackson's new film was announced on Wednesday on the 50th anniversary of the Beatles' iconic rooftop performance in London. The band on January 30th, 1969 staged an impromptu concert on the roof of Apple Records. This was the last public appearance made by the Beatles. Oscar Isaac is being eyed to star in director Denis Villeneuve's upcoming reboot of Dune. Isaac is in negotiations to star in the film that will star Timothy Chamolet as main character Paul Atreides, Dave Bautista, Rebecca Ferguson, Charlotte Rampling as Reverend Mother Moham, and Stellan Sazgar as Baron Harkonnen. Isaac may potentially star as the father of Chamolet's Paul Atreides. Villanova is writing the script along with Eric Roth and John Spathis. A Dune film from director David Lynch was released in 1984. Dune, based on Frank Herbert's series of the novels, takes place on the planet Arrakis, where competing noble families fight over a valuable resource. Paul Atreus fights to win back the plan from the Galactic Emperor. The production on the film is expected to begin in the spring in Budapest and Jordan. Isaac will next be seen in Netflix's thriller Triple Frontier before reprising his role as Paul Dameron in Star Wars Episode X, set for release on December 20th. Actor and comedian Pete Davidson will star in Jude Apatow's new film. The Hollywood Report confirmed the 25-year-old Saturday Night Live star is in teaming up with Apatow on the director's first movie since Trainwreck in 2015. The entire film is being developed by Universal Pictures with executive vice president Eric Bears to oversee the project. 
Production is slated to begin in May or June. Deadline said the movie is inspired by Davidson's own life, including the death of the actor's father, a firefighter, on 9-11. Davidson co-wrote the script with Apatow and Dave Cyrus. The film is expected to have similarities to Trainwreck, which Apatow crafted for actress and comedian Amy Schumer. Trainwreck allowed Schumer to play a version of herself using material from her own life. Davidson joined SNL in 2014 and will also appear in the upcoming movies What Men Want and Going Places. He is also known for his high-profile romance with singer Ariana Grande, which ended in October. The cast of Zombieland, including Woody Harrelson, Emma Stone, Jesse Eisenberg, and Abigail Breslin, are together once again in the first poster for the upcoming sequel, Zombieland Double Tap. Sony Pictures released a poster Tuesday on Twitter by taking part in the hashtag 10 year challenge. The studio placed the, ne- the new poster next to the original film's poster from 2009. Sony Pictures says, hashtag 10 year challenge, challenge accepted, hashtag Zombieland 2. Harrelson, Stone, Eisenberg, and Breslin are, sh- are striking the same pose from the original together while holding different weapons. Ruben Flesher is returning to direct the f- sequel based on a screenplay by original writers Paul Wernick and Rhett Reese. The film is set for release on October 11th. The film's double tap uh, title refers to a practice in the first film about shooting a zombie in the head a second time after taking them down to make sure that they are all dead. Eric Andre and Lil Ray Howery are teaming up for a new hidden camera prank film titled Bad Trip. The film comes from Jackass producer Jeff Tremin and Orion Pictures. The project will be the first hidden camera narrative film since 2013's Jackass, featuring Bad Grandpa star Johnny Knoxville. Andre and Howery are set to star as two friends on a cross-country road trip that's full of pranks. Ketao Sigruki, who helmed Andre's The Eric Andre Show on Adult Swim, is directing. David Bernad, Andre, and Ruben Fletcher are producing alongside Tremony. Uh, Bernad and Fletcher said in a joint statement, Eric and Rel's hilarious performances combined with spectacular groundbreaking pranks will make Bad Trip the, the, the defining prank movie for a new generation. Incredibly proud to debut the next in line to Barat and Bad Grandpa. Comedian Cheryl Underwood says she enthusiastically welcomed Caroline and Naba to the talk table, but still misses former panelist Julie Chen. Chen left CBS's daytime chat fest in September after host Les Moonves was ousted as the network's chief executive officer and chairman in the wake of sexual misconduct allegations. As with the stars, Judge Anaba was named the permanent panelist on the talk in early January, and Underwood says she is fitting in quite nicely. Underwood told UPI in a recent phone interview, she's fun, she doesn't take herself too seriously, she's very open. Underwood says she connects with Inaba because they are single while their fellow co-hosts are married with children. She says we both pro- uh, probably want somebody in our lives. People think in this business, oh, well, you have everything, you have it all. But to be able to talk to someone that you can relate to, I think it's a good idea. The fact that Inaba's arrival dovetailed with Chen's departure made for a bittersweet experience with a 55-year-old Arkansas native. Underwood says, I love Julie Chen. This was my first real TV job. She really made me feel welcome. We were a great team. Underwood, who is also a popular radio personality, says she learned a lot about interviewing celebrities from watching Jen set the tone and ask unpredictable questions. Underwood says, nobody gets ambushed on our show. Not that anybody else does it. I'm just saying that for us, we're about that conversation. We talk, but that also means we've got to listen so we can intuit what our guests need. Although she has co-hosted the talk since 2011, Underwood says it's still thrilling to hear that celebrities such as Lily Tomlin, Jane Fonda, Kobe Bryant, Jamie Lee Curtis, and Patti LaBelle will be dropping by. She also gets starstruck. Uh, She said, when you see Tom Selleck walk in, it changes how you feel. He's the kind of guy who will pull a chair out for a woman. Um, She also says she always is happy to see actor Shamar Moore. Um... She says he's handsome, dashing, leading the SWAT team. Also adding that she enjoys chatting with her friends in comedy, such as George Lopez, Nick Cannon, and Cedric the Entertainer. Padma Lashmi says late Top Chef alum Fatima Ali changed her life forever. The 48-year-old Top Chef host paid tribute to Ali in an essay People published Tuesday following the season 15's contestant's death from a rare form of bone cancer. Lashmi recalled, I met Fatima on the first day of filming in Top Chef in Colorado. She was hard to miss. She was beautiful, but that's not what struck me. She says there was a strong defiance in her posture. 
Her hands folded across her slim frame, lower, her lower lip jutting out slightly. A Mona Lisa smiled to hide her nervousness. I looked the glint in her eyes and that serious look of determination. Lashmi said she saw her younger self in Ali and purposely challenged the chef during her time on the show. She also connected to Ali as a fellow immigrant and woman of color working in the food industry. The star says, when I heard that she had been diagnosed with terminal cancer, I felt punched in the gut. As she got sicker, I made apple pie and delivered her samosas. We shared dinners and cracked jokes, anything to lighten the mood. Uh, she lauded, you couldn't know Fatima without falling in love with her. Her self-awareness, strength, and humor were boundless even until the very end. Fatima's life was short, but her imprint on me will be there forever. Ali died last Friday at the age of 29 at her home in San Marino, California, according to the New York Times. She had announced in 2017 that she was diagnosed with Ewing's sarcoma, a type of cancer which affects bone and soft tissue. Lashmi honored Ali in a tweet the same day as the chef's death. The star wrote, Goodbye, little sis. One of our brightest stars has fallen from the sky. I have no words, but here are some of hers. I dream of being better. I dream of being myself again, but I know I'll never quite be the same, and that's okay. I look forward to meeting that woman one day. Popular series You has found a new female lead for season two. Netflix announced on its See What's Next official Twitter account Wednesday that Victoria uh, Pedretti will play the female lead in the new season. Pedretti will join aspiring chef Love Quinn. She joins Penn Badgley, who plays Joel Goldberg on a Netflix series. The post reads, Haunting of the How- Hill House Breakout, Victoria Pedretti land the female lead in um, at You Netflix season two. Uh, it reads that she plays Love Quinn, an inspiring uh, chef who doesn't care about social media. She also tends to uh, tending to deep grief. So when she meets Joe, she sends a shared knowledge of profound loss. Uh, Ped Reddy confirmed the news with a heart emoji on her own account. You initially premiered on Lifetime in September and debuted on Netflix in December. The show passed 40 million views on Netflix this month and will move to its streaming service exclusively for a second season. Season 1 followed Joe, played by Badgley, as she falls in love and becomes obsessed with an inspiring writer, Guinevere Beck, played by Elizabeth Lale. Season 2 will follow the character's romance with love, played by Pedretti. Pedretti is known for playing Eleanor Nell Crane Vance in the Netflix series adaptation of The Haunting of Hill House. She will also star in Quentin Tarantino's new film, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. CBS All Access announced Wednesday that it is reworking the Stephen King's thriller The Stand. Um, writer and executive producer Josh Boone said in a statement, I read The Stand under my bed when I was 12 and my Baptist parents burned it in our fireplace upon discovery. Incest, I stole my dad's FedEx account number and mailed King a letter professing my love for his work. Several weeks later, I came home to find a box had arrived from Maine and inside were several books, each inscribed with a beautiful note from God himself who encouraged me in my writing and thank me for being a fan. No casting has been announced yet for the 10-part apocalyptic drama about the battle between good and evil for the fate of mankind. King says, I'm excited and so pleased that the sand is going to have a new life on this new exciting platform. The people involved are men and women who know exactly what they're doing. The scripts are dynamite. The result bids to be something memorable and thrilling. I believe it will take viewers away to a world they hope will never happen. King's novel was previously adapted as a 1994 miniseries starring Gary Sinise, Molly Ringwald, Rob Lowe, Miguel Ferrer, Laura San Giacomo, Jamie Sheridan, Ozzy Davis, Ruby Dee, and, and Bill Fagerberg. Uh, there has been a revival of interest in the author's work in recent years. A 2017 adaptation of It was a big screen blockbuster that spawned a sequel due in theaters September 6. Castle Rock, an anthology series that ties together numerous characters and stories from King's canon, debuted last year on Hulu, has been renewed for a second season. The AT&T Audience Channel also has aired two seasons of Mr. Mercedes, which is based on King's book by the same name. It was recently renewed in season three. Luis Fonsi joined Jimmy Fallon in The Tonight Show to sing his hit song Despacito using new random lyrics. Fallon started things off on Wednesday by performing a version of the track about fl- flaming hot Cheetos before Fonsi jumped in to sing about actor Jared Leto. The pair come together for a duet that was centered around a tiny Speedo. Tiny Speedo, old man tanning in a tiny Speedo. I think he needs to be way more discreto. This whole beach, can he see his little Pepito, tiny Speedo? Fonzie and Fallon sang in the style of Despacito. Despacito, which featured Daddy Yankee 
and was released in 2017, has won multiple awards, including Record of the Year and Song of the Year at the Latin Grammys. Justin Bieber had also appeared on a version of the song. The music video for Despacito was the first video to reach 3 billion views on YouTube. Chicago police release images of people of interest to the investigation of alleged hate crime attack on actress-singer Jesse Smollett Wednesday night. The two images posted on Twitter by Chicago Police Chief Communications Officer Anthony Guillemi comes from surveillance footage of two individuals walking down the street with their backs to the camera. Uh, Google Lemmy said in the tweet, while video does not capture an encounter, detectives are taking this development seriously, which to question individuals as more cameras are being reviewed. Smollett reportedly uh, told police early Tuesday that he was outside at about 2 a.m. to pick up food when two men assaulted him, tossed an unknown chemical on him, and put a rope around his neck while making homophobic and racist remarks. The Empire star was briefly hospitalized and treated for his injuries. Police say that the incident is being investigated as a possible cr- hate crime. Before the images were released, Ganyami told the Chicago Tribune that the individuals were captured on video in an area close in proximity and time to where the altercation happened. Giliami said they are outside on the street walking and they are in the area that we have determined it could have taken place in the time in the area. It certainly led us to questions for them. Numerous celebrities, including Halle Berry, Michael B. Jordan, Lee Daniels, offered their support to Smollett on Tuesday and Wednesday condemning the attack. Rosie O'Donnell says people sometimes mistakenly think her new fiancé is her daughter. The, 53, uh, the 56-year-old television personality discussed Elizabeth Rooney, a police officer, 23 years her junior, on Tuesday's episode of Late Night with Seth Meyers following their engagement. O'Donnell told host Seth Meyers she's a police officer in Rochester, Massachusetts. She's a mountain police officer. She rides a horse, yes, and she's 20 years younger than me. Um, she later says it's, it is sort of sad at the airport when people say, oh my God, is it you, Rosie O'Donnell? Yes, it is. And your daughter's so beautiful. O'Donnell says she saw Rooney's training as a police officer in action. The first time she stayed the, uh, the night at O'Donnell's home in Nyack, New York. Uh, the star recalled, I had lived there for 20 years, uh, in Nyack and the alarm had never gone off. Not one time. First night she stayed there, the alarm goes off. Before I'm even awake, I hear her gun cocking. Stay right here. I'm going downstairs. And she said she's like kicking the ki- the ki- in the kid's door. She's like checking for someone. I was like, my God, this is Cagney and Lacey, you know? And then she comes upstairs and she's like, wait, right here. I'm going to go talk to the cops outside there, sweetheart. O'Donnell, who got engaged to Rooney in October, says she appreciates her girlfriend's response. She says, you know, there's something so common and warm about... Uh, and amazing to being with a woman as a gay person who has a lot of guy qualities. You know, she was in the army for a bunch of years, and then she was a professional boxer, and she looks like a Barbie, kind of. O'Donnell is actual is actual parent to five children, including daughter Chelsea O'Donnell, who gave birth to her first child in December. O'Donnell says becoming a grandmother has been a beautiful experience. Priyanka Chopra says her 200-person wedding was an intimate experience. The 36-year-old actress discussed her three-day wedding celebration with Nick Jonas during Wednesday's episode of the Ellen DeGeneres show. Uh, Chopper told host Ellen DeGeneres, well, it was just three days, one Indian ceremony and one Western Christian ceremony, and one day of pre-rituals, which we have in the Hindu wedding. Uh, She says usually Indian weddings are like 1,000 people at least. We had only 200, which was mostly families, uh, because both of us have giant families. We just wanted to keep it super intimate about just family. Chopra says her mother, Madhu Chopra, was upset. She wasn't able to invite more people to the wedding, such as her jeweler and hairdresser. The star joke, she was like, I need to have another party for the 150,000 people that I know. The Quantico star tied the knot with Jonas at the Taj Mahal Bahawan Palace in Jodhpur, India, in December. The couple celebrated their marriage again Sunday in Belmont, North Carolina, where Jonas's father, Kevin Jonas Sr., lives and owns a restaurant. Chopper and Jonas got engaged in July, in July after a couple of months of dating. Chopper confirmed on Ellen that she first met Jonas on Twitter after the former Jonas Brothers singer slid into her DMs. The actress says, so millennial of him, he DM'd me on Twitter saying, I've heard we should connect. 
Model and television personality Carly Claus is loving her new role as wife. The Project One Way host discussed her newly wed bliss with husband Joshua Kirshner while promoting the Bravo series Tuesday at the Television Critics Association Winter Press Tour. She said, according to people, I love being married. Honestly, I just feel really happy. It's so nice to just have a home base. I can't explain. Nothing has really changed. But all in all the best ways, it feels different. I love it. Klaus said Kirshner, the brother of White House advisor Jared Kirshner, has been a welcome source of support as she attempts to balance her many projects with her personal life. The star said, according to Fox News, I'm sure every woman is juggling 10 things that she wouldn't even realize. She added, for me, I feel really grateful that I have a partner, my husband, who is an incredible support to me and wants to help me accomplish my dreams no matter what they are. Klaus and Kushner married in an intimate ceremony in New York in October and will reportedly host a larger celebration with friends in the spring. The couple took their honeymoon in South Africa in December. Klaus will replace Heidi Klum as the host of Project Runaway when the reality competition moves to Bravo this year after 11 seasons on Lifetime. Klaus showed off the show's new set and Instagram video in November. She told fans, the designers are awesome, the set is awesome, and I'm just so excited to share with you the new season of Project Runway. Newfound Glory have announced a new North American summer tour in support of their From the Screen to Your Stereo compilation series. From the Screen to Your Stereo to Your Town tour will begin May 5th at the Music Farm in Charleston, South Carolina, before wrapping up on July 14th at the Revolution Live in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Newfound Glory will also be performing in cities such as Atlanta, Philadelphia, Boston, New York, Cleveland, Detroit, Chicago, Denver, Los Angeles, Phoenix, Dallas, and New Orleans, among others. The band will be joined by special guests Real Friends, The Early November, and The Doll Skins. Tickets will go on sale for the general public starting on February 1st. Newfound Glory plans on releasing From the Screen to Your Stereo 3 in, on May 3rd. The series features the groups covering popular songs from films. The third volume will feature Cups, The Power of Love, and Eyes of the Tiger, among other tracks. And here are the top 10 songs on the Billboard Hot 100 seal charts for the week of February 2nd. Number 10, Little Baby and Gunna with Drip Too Hard. Number 9, Maroon 5 featuring Cardi B with Girls Like You. Number 8, Post Malone with Wow. Number 7, Marshmello and Bastille with Happier. Number 6, Panic at the Disco with High Hopes. Number 5, Travis Scott with Sicko Mode. Number 4, Ariana Grande with Thank You Next. Number 3, Post Malone and Swally with Sunflower. Number two, Halsley with Without Me. And the number one song on the Billboard Hot 100 single charts for the week of February 2nd, Ariana Grande with Seven Rings. And now let's take a look at what happened on this date in entertainment history. On this date in 1974, the pioneering movie producer Samuel Goldwyn dies in his sleep at the age of 91 in his home in Los Angeles. Born Schmiel Gisevets in Warsaw, Gold, uh, Goldwyn left Poland when he was 11 years old from, for England and later New York, where he took a menial job in a glove factory. He would rise to become a partner in the, in the company by the time he was in, in his mid-twenties. Upon arrival in the United States, he took the name Samuel Goldfish, the easiest approximation of his Polish name. After marrying Blanche Lasky in 1910, he went into business several years later with her brother, the vaudeville producer Jesse Lasky, and they co-founded the Jesse Lasky Featured Play Company. The company's first production, The Squawk Man, 1914, was the first feature-length movie picture to be produced in Hollywood, as opposed to the general Los Angeles area. Goldwyn left the company shortly after it merged with Out of Zucker's Famous Players Company in 1970. 1917, selling out his shares for nearly half a million dollars. With the Broadway producers Edgar and Arch Seelwin, he then established a new production venture called Goldwyn Pictures Corporation as a, co- a combination of Goldfish and Seelwin. He liked the name so much that he had his surname legally changed to Goldwyn. The company subsequently merged with Metro Pictures, forming the basis for what would become later Metro Goldwyn Mayer. Goldwyn subsequently left the company to become an independent producer. Having divorced Blanche Lasky in 1915, the couple had one daughter, Ruth. Goldwyn married the actress Frances Howard in 1925. In 1926, he joined United Artists, a cooperative production company formed by Charlie Chaplin, among others, but left after a fallout with co-founder Mary Pickford in 1939. 
Because of Goldwyn's demanding nature and his unwillingness to work with anyone other than the most respected screenwriters, directors, actors, and creative artists, his films earn a reputation as some of the finest in the business. His constant drive for perfection led him to dominate the production of his films to a degree that sometimes annoyed his employees, but almost invariably produced a better finished product. This effect was known in the business as the Goldwyn Touch. He was also known for making numerous colorful statements, which were dubbed Goldwynisms. Two of the most famous examples repeated over the years were Include Me Out and I'll Tell You in Two Words, Impossible. Standout films over Goldwyn's long career included Dogsworth, 1936, Weathering Heights, 1939, The Little Foxes, 1941, and The Best Years of Our Lives, 1946, which won Goldwyn his first Oscar for Best Picture. Also in 1947, he received the Irvin Thalberg Memorial Award for his contributions to the film industry. In 1959, at the age of 78, Goldwyn came out of retirement to make his last movie, Porgy and Bess. Ten years later, he suffered a severe stroke that left him partly paralyzed. Upon his death in 1974, his obituary in the New York Times called Goldwyn a Hollywood legend, a motion picture producer whose films, always created on a grand scale, were notable for that of the most elusive traits, taste and quality. And as your entertainment report for Thursday, January 31st, 2019, I'm your host, Mr. Downtown Ray Mello. I'll be back tomorrow to deliver some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, facebook.com slash the entertainment report with Ray Mello. That's R E Y M E L O on Twitter at the enter report or on Instagram at the entertainment report. You can listen to this episode or any previous episodes of The Entertainment Report anytime you want on iHeartRadio. Just go to iHeart.com or your iHeart phone app, search for The Entertainment Report, and it'll take you to the page. Good night, and God bless you all.